in today's class we'll look at s and a b c d parameters with respect to two ports and we'll also look at resonant circuits so you may recall from your earlier courses that for any two port network you can define different sets of relations between the currents and the voltages between the input port which is usually 1 and the output port which is 2 for example the z parameter relation is the voltage matrix is the z matrix times the current matrix <clears throat> or it's often represented as v equals z times i but all of these are matrices similarly you can define your y y parameters h parameters and your g parameters now what we notice is all of these relate all of these relate your voltages and currents of the two port however if you have this is valid for any two port however <coughs> excuse me for a distributed network you talk of incident and reflected waves okay so the two quantities we want to relate are the incident and reflected waves so this naturally gives rise to what are called scattering parameters so the relationship is the reflected waves in this case voltages represented by a matrix vr equals the product of the s matrix and the incident voltages so let's look at the two port again now one important difference is the the scattering parameters are defined with respect to a character characteristic impedance of the system which is z0 so you have the input incident which is vi1 the input reflected voltage which is vr1 the output in, in, incident which is vi2 and output reflected which is vr2 so of course you have vr1 vr2 is the s parameters times the vi1 and vi2 <coughs> now what is also commonly done is <coughs> 
the reflected and incident waves are normalized with respect to the characteristic impedance. So you define four other quantities. So you have Aj is Vij over root of Z0. That is A1 is Vi1 over root of Z0 and A2 is Vi2 over root of Z0. And these are the incident quantities. The reflected quantities are again Vrj over root of Z0. The main idea is Aj squared and BS, Bj squared stand for the powers of the incident and reflected waves. And Sij, which are the uh, scattering para matrix uh, components, they are often, you will see, often represented in, in decibels or dB. I am sure you must have learned this in a previous course. Uh, decibel is nothing but 20 log of the value for a linear value. <clears throat> and now you can define S11 is B1 over A1 when A2 equals 0 and this is VR1 over VI1 sorry over VI1 and this is often called gamma which is the input reflection coefficient. S21 is B2 over A1 when A2 is 0, which is Br2 over Vi1. <coughs> so, what does this mean? There is an incident wave at the input, and the reflected wave at the output, when an ins wave Vi1 is incident at the input, is called S21. And this obviously stands for the gain of the two port. And note that S21 squared is Vr2 squared over Vi1 squared. And you can rewrite it slightly differently. And this is called the power gain. If you express them in dB, they will have the same dB value because for power quantities, the dB is taken as, as 10 log instead of 20 log. The other important quantity S22 is B2 over A2 which is Vr2 over Vi2 and this is the output reflection coefficient. Finally, S12 is B1 over A2 when A1 equals 0, which is you have a wave Vi2 incident at the second port and you have a reflection at the input port. And this is your the reverse gain of your system. So normally what do you want? Normally if if your system is very well matched, if you if your two port is well matched to, a, to your characteristic impedance Z0, there won't be any reflections and therefore S11 would be very small. Similarly, if the output is very well matched, S22 would be very small. And if your system has a lot of gain, you want S21 to be large, you want to get as much gain as possible from your system. And of course, S12, which is your reverse gain, usually if you look at amplifiers or normal systems, you want them to have a gain in the forward sense, but you want the reverse gains to gain to be as low as possible. Because as we'll see later, 
that also leads to instabilities now a short note on units that we'll see in this course so let's say x is a linear electrical value okay for example it could be voltages currents and so on so x in db is nothing but 20 times log to base 10 of x now if you have a quantity which is in power p which is proportional to v squared or i squared for example p in db is usually is 10 log the power now one other very important quantity which you'll see is dbm and that is so if you look at a decibels dbs it's it's usually a relative quantity whereas dbm is an absolute quantity it's 10 log of p over it's the power relative to 1 milliwatt and you take 10 log times that what that means is 1 milliwatt corresponds to 0 dBm obviously because 10 log of 1 is 0 and if you have 10 milliwatts this corresponds to 10 log of 10 which is 10 dBm and so on and other one other useful thing to know is if your characteristic impedance is 50 ohms 0 dBm corresponds to approximately 223 milli, sorry 223 millivolts RMS that is the voltage swing of a 0 dBm signal at an impedance 50 ohms is 223 millivolts and you will also occasionally see people talking about dBv for example so if you have a, a 1 volt signal that could correspond to 0 dBv okay so that is occasionally used the other very important quantity which is used is called dbc which is power with respect to the carrier okay so you'll see this used quite often okay so what that means is the c means the 0 db reference is power of the carrier okay a carrier is, is is usually the the reference signal <clears throat> okay I'll give you a simple example so this is the reference signal and you'll see that this is often used for noise or distortion sometimes interfering signals sorry and so on so to give you an example you could talk about so let's say your desired signal is here so your let me call this omega rf and you have some some kind of interfering signal so you could say that so let's say this was 10 db you could say interferer is you could say interferer level minus 10 dbc or so let's say this is the amplitude in db and of course this is omega similarly so let's say this is noise per spectral density we'll we'll look at this in more detail in a later class but 
so let's say if you have a you have your desired signal and you have a noise floor okay some random you know broadband noise we'll look at what noise is but i think most of you know enough to understand this concept so which is you have uh, some kind of broadband noise in the system so you could say for example that the noise is at minus 80 dbc with respect to the signal or the noise floor is you could say you might hear somebody saying the noise floor is minus 80 dbc okay so now we'll move on to abcd parameters so this is very useful for cascaded two ports and so if you have it let's let's look at the two port again so the only thing to remember is so you define i1 as the current going in and v1 at the the voltage at the input port and the v2 is the voltage at the output port the important thing to note is that i2 is now defined as the current leaving the port so it's the opposite direction as that as what we assumed as, as what we normally assume for two port let's say z y uh, h and g parameters okay and you could say the the relationship between the input and output parameters are v1 i1 is a b c d times v2 and i2 okay so let's say you have a cascade of cascade of two two, two port networks then you you can you can say that so this is the relation for the first two port and the second two port can relate so let me call this abcd1 times v3 i3 so what that means is you can there's a very straightforward relation between the the v3 i3 and v1 i1 so as you can see this is very useful for cascaded systems <coughs> okay so now that we are done with looking at two ports so at least a quick introduction to two ports that we'll need to understand what we are going to be studying over the next couple of classes let's look at the concept of resonance so what you'll see is all narrowband systems employ resonance okay so most rf circuits for example we have tuned amplifiers which are bandpass you need impedance transformations that we will we'll be seeing that very soon over the next few classes and a little bit later in the course we'll be looking at rf oscillators so they employ resonance so you you might remember from your earlier courses that you have two kinds of resonance you have you have series and parallel resonances so what we'll do is we'll take the parallel resonance look at it in a little bit of detail then i we we won't have time to cover series resonance in a lot of detail but what i want you to do is go back to your when you go back as as a as a homework I want you to go back and try to derive the same expressions for the series resonance circuits. Okay, so let's look at. So we're going to look at parallel resonances. <coughs> 
in this uh, in this class so let's say we have a current which is driving a parallel rlc network okay and let's say the current has a certain profile so it has an i peak okay and this is your in okay so what do you know you know intuitively at low frequencies you know that it should behave inductively okay so you know that at low frequencies the inductance at dc it's of course a short circuit at low frequencies the inductance impedance would dominate over the c and r and capacitance of course would be a very large impedance okay so you know it's inductive and you know at very high frequencies it's capacitive okay so what does this mean if you had to look at the impedance of the network as a function of frequency let's say the magnitude of the impedance you know it looks inductive which means it's linear with frequency at low frequ at low frequencies and you know at very high frequencies it's going to have a 1 over omega c kind of expression so what is it going to look like here in between so let's say we you try to plot the you try to calculate the admittance y of omega you know that's 1 over r plus j omega c plus 1 over j omega l okay which is 1 over r plus j times omega c minus 1 over omega l so at resonance <clears throat> the impedance is completely real and so let's say let's call the resonant frequency omega not so you have omega not c at some frequency omega not you would find that omega not c is 1 over omega not l and this frequency is the resonant frequency and so you can derive the very well known expression for the resonant frequency of an lc of a parallel lc network okay so this is a very common result and which you need to know now another note i want you to note that the omega not is the angular frequency and f not is the frequency in hertz okay so i don't want you to confuse these two okay so this confusion is very common okay so this is radians per second and this is in hertz <coughs> now we also know that y of omega not now is 1 by r which is purely resistive okay so what that means is at resonance so you, your equivalent circuit is simply this so now we are in a position to plot the imp impedance in a little bit more detail okay so if it was inductive it would go this way and this is your omega not okay and let's also plot the the phase okay so what happens at very low frequencies when it's inductive it's going to have plus 90 degrees and and you know at very high frequencies when it's capacitive it's going to have minus 90 degrees so you have some kind of and of course at resonance it's purely impedance is purely real so it passes through the zero degree point okay now 
some very convenient on chip values what you see is so something to remember right one nano henry in parallel with one picofarad resonates at approximately 5 gigahertz okay not exactly but approximately 5 gigahertz and what you'll find is you know <clears throat> for resonant circuits a few hundreds of femtofarads to a few picofarads is quite common similarly for inductors you could have anywhere from a few hundred pico henry to several nano henrys those are very common values now we'll also define what is called the quality factor of resonance of the resonant circuit now the first physical definition is q is omega times the energy stored by the average power dissipated okay now what do we know we know that at omega not sorry v out is i in times r what does that mean so you have the inductor and the capacitor now their impedance cancels out but there is actually stored energy going back and forth between the l and the c okay there is stored energy okay going back and forth between l and c okay so what is the total energy stored so we know that the it's half cv squared is the peak energy stored in the capacitor and we know v peak is i peak times r okay what is the average power lost power dissipated it's i rms squared times r which is i peak squared times r over 2 because i peak over root 2 is the rms so what does this mean q is omega not times half c i peak squared times r squared sorry oh, looks like there's a problem okay that's better i peak squared times r squared over half i peak squared times r and we know omega not is 1 over root lc so this means cr over root lc equals r over root of l over c okay and an intuitive check is you know that if your let's say your resistance is infinite that means that there is no power dissipated in the system okay and what that means is your q should be infinite and that makes sense here right you know that as r tends to infinite q also tends to infinity and root l over c is the characteristic impedance of the system, of the network and at resonance the magnitude of the impedance of the inductor is omega not times l which is l over root lc which is root of l over c and this also is the magnitude of the impedance of the capacitor okay so what you'll see is basic forms of q are you'll see q equals r over root of l over c 
and you will see q equals r over which is r over omega naught times l and you will see r over which is omega naught rc okay so these are the different forms of q now one thing to be beware of some of you might have thought that the inductance and the capacitance completely cancel each other out note that i said that the their impedances cancel each other out but you should be very careful because remember that there is energy flowing back and forth between the inductor and the capacitor so you should be beware of branch currents let's try to calculate the currents through the inductor and the capacitor okay what you'll see is if you try to calculate it you'll find that the current through these two are what is this it's v out over omega not l which is right what is this i in times q okay so what that means is if your q let's say the q of your network is 1000 if you have an input of 1 milliamp your current through your inductance and capacitance could be 1 amp which is huge so what you notice is very large currents can flow right and it is dangerous to think of the l and c as cancelling each other out and now what this means is careful layout okay that is if you have a 1 amp if you have a very thin wire for example you are we'll be looking at layout where the width of these current lines would matter a lot so if 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 you design so they the in any wire having a certain width or thickness can carry has a certain current density beyond which it will melt it will heat up and melt so if you are not careful you could just burn out either the inductor or the capacitor usually it's the capacitor which is the first to go because inductor already you will you, as you will see in one of the next few classes it's already made with pretty wide traces whereas the capacitor is often made with much thinner much thinner lines so you, you need to make sure that you have current carrying capability okay okay now let's look at a few more relationships between uh, q so let's look at bandwidth and q relationship so to do this what we'll do is we'll calculate the impedance close to resonance okay so what we'll do is let's take a frequency which is omega equals omega not plus delta omega and what we're going to do is we're going to calculate we know that y of omega is 1 over r plus okay we're going to calculate y of omega not plus delta omega so first what is this it's 1 by r plus j over omega l into omega square lc minus 1 Okay, omega naught plus delta omega whole square LC minus one. And you can expand this further. One over R plus so what you're going to do is. Omega square LC plus two omega naught delta omega LC plus delta omega squared LC minus one. 
now what do we know about this we know that omega squared at omega we, we know that omega o, omega not is 1 over root lc so these two terms cancel each other out okay then sorry we'll take out some common factors omega not delta omega and lc okay what is left omega delta omega so you have 2 here plus delta omega over omega not so what do we know we can cancel some more terms so omega not l so omega not l okay so we cancel those also and then what we're going to do what is 1 over 1 plus x when x is very small it's 1 minus x so we're going to take this term to the numerator is r plus j so what do we have left over so we have delta omega times c okay so and this is 1 over r plus j delta omega c 2 minus 2 delta omega over omega naught plus delta omega over omega naught and now we notice that there is a delta omega term outside and since delta omega is small we are going to neglect all of these higher order terms ok so what this means is this is approximately 1 over r plus j 2 delta omega c ok what does this mean the equivalent circuit around resonance it's similar to an rc but rc parallel network but impedance r and the capacitance is 2c ok so what does this mean and what we will see is you can do the same thing for y of omega naught minus delta omega and you will get a similar equivalent circuit. So if you try to plot the admittance around resonance, so you have omega and so the impedance goes something like this and let us say you have So we know this is 1 over 2 RC and let us say, say we are looking at the 3 dB bandwidth. Let me make this a little bit. Okay. And by symmetry, we know this is also 1 over 2 RC. So total bandwidth is 1 over RC and let us look at what is omega naught over bandwidth. We know omega naught is 1 over root LC, bandwidth is 1 over RC. Okay, So this is R over root of L over C which is we know this expression now it is the Q. Okay, So Q for a parallel RLC network is also omega naught over bandwidth. So we have different definitions for Q. So we looked at the fundamental physical definition which is omega naught times E total over average power dissipated and as you will see this is the physical definition okay and it's also applicable to distributed systems and let's say 
also non resonant systems such as lr or rc networks okay you can talk if you don't have even if you don't have any capacitances you can talk about q of those networks then we looked at q is imaginary part of z of omega over real part of z of omega okay this is another definition of q you you actually get this from if you, if you go back and we actually got it as in terms of the admittance but you can get it in terms of the impedance also so this is another fundamental definition and then you have q equals omega not over bandwidth and then you have a fourth definition which is omega not by 2 times d phi over d omega where phi of omega is the phase of the open loop transfer function okay so we sometimes use this to define the q of some circuits like oscillators but if you look at simple rlc circuits these these expressions are actually identical you can derive each one from the physical definition okay however if you take com more complex resonant systems let's say they have more than one inductor or capacitor or they are not simple rlc networks rlc parallel or series networks what you'll find is the q which you calculate or determine from the physical definition is different from the q you get from for example omega not over bandwidth and in many cases you may act what you can determine or what you can calculate is the is one of either one or two however what you might be interested in is the because you are interested in narrow band amplifiers for example you may be more interested in the third definition okay so now a quick look at series rlc networks so let's say you have an impedance uh, voltage v in being applied to a series rlc network so let's say the voltage across the inductance is vl and voltage across the capacitance is vc so you know at low frequencies the network is going to be capacitive and because the capacitance impedance is going to dominate at very high frequencies the system is going to be inductive okay and at resonance your the impedances of your inductance and capacitance are will are equal and opposite and they cancel each other out so what does that mean it means that vl plus vc equals 0 okay and all the input voltage appears across the resistor you can show that z of omega is let's say at any frequency z of omega is r of r plus j omega l plus 1 over j omega c okay and you can you can proceed in the same manner as we did for the parallel network and show that omega not is again 1 over root lc and remember f not is 1 over 2 pi root lc and the network at omega not network behaves purely resistive okay now if you if you try to plot your z of omega magnitude so we know that it's very high impedance because because capacitive and it goes like this okay and at resonance it's equal to r at omega not similarly if you try to plot the phase so it starts off so at minus 90 and this is the angle of z of omega and i want you to prove for yourself the analogous uh, analogous case very easy which is 
the voltage across the inductor 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 and the voltage across the capacitor are both the input voltage times q similarly that we saw it was a the current through the inductor and the capacitor was q times the input current here it's q times the input voltage and what that means is it's not just a short right you actually have very large voltages that can be developed across the l and c and what we'll see is <coughs> useful for what is this so if you have q times if you apply vl v in and you get q times v in across the inductor or the capacitor it's we'll find that it's very useful for lnas why because it's a passive voltage amplification right okay so it's not just a short we'll when we get to the lnas portion we'll look at this in more detail okay so that's it for today